Okay, once again, good afternoon. We are still learning on YouTube. Today, we have a very simple topic to deal with. As I indicated on the day we were talking about office personnel, if you remember, I said that particular topic, if you go through your syllabus, you wouldn't see that topic there, but it was very important for you to know. The same thing applies to what you are going to do today. It's a very important topic you should know, but when you want to see it in your syllabus, you wouldn't see it. It's very important as a business management student, you should know. Particularly, I mean, in case study, you see, case study is said that you have to have broad knowledge on a lot of issues, even outside business management, because there are certain things you need to apply. And what you are even going to do today, there was a day, or not even a day, they had asked them on two occasions. So it's very, very important in cases, so you should know them. Now, remember, we have done departmentation. So departmentation results in departments. So when you go to the uh, various organizations or, or uh, any organization, the, there are departments. And each department has its own functions. And the number or the types of departments that you have in a particular organization will depend on the uh, nature of the organization and its size. So for example, some proprietor may not have any uh, department at all, and it may be a store where the sole proprietor may be their selling. You go to some organization, they may, they may have only two, three, four, five, and so on and so uh, forth. So today we are going to look at the various departments in an organization, and then their functions. And these are the departments we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at the finance department. And that is not new to you, because we have done the organizational chart, organogram, so you know the various departments in a manufacturing firm. And you know that financial manager was one of them. So if you have a financial manager, then certainly if you have a, a finance department. So finance department, then human resource department, which was formerly called personnel department. Then we have the production department. We have purchasing or procurement department. We have the sales department. We have advertising department. And if you look at it carefully, I have done this. Then I said marketing department. So marketing department can be the combination of these two departments. When you go to an organization, they may have a marketing department and they may not have sales and then advertising department. The marketing department will be performing these uh, functions. So it depends on the organization. Then we have administration, or we can also say general administration. When you come to school, you, you, you know in school at times you will say, oh, I'm going to the administration. At times they call you, the school administrator calls the class captain. And the class captain goes to the administration, the general administration. Then maintenance, the maintenance department or the maintenance office. So when you come to school, you know your school too, there's a maintenance officer. And there is an office for that particular uh, position. So that is that. These are the ones that. I'll be uh, talking about. But apart from these departments, there are other departments. But I will not go into that. You may have to uh, research, you may have to read about them. 
So I said others are research and development department. So the name tells you what they do, research and development department. Now you also have the legal department. Legal. So legal tells you what they do there. And certainly you know that that department you have lawyers uh, or, uh, or solicitors and uh, barristers and uh, what have you uh, there. Then you have the transport department. Transport department. Then you can have IT, information technology department, and so on and so forth. So that is that one. So let's now start with the finance department. Why do some of you may become chartered accountant? You may become account, an accountant. You may become something that is related to accounting. You learned about careers in accounting. So if you go to the finance department, we have the chief accountant that may be the head there. Then there may be other personnel that will be working with him. You can have the accountant there. You may have account clerk. You may have posting clerk. And you know in accounting what is meant by to post. If when you prepare your uh, account, especially you make uh, postings from one, from the day books to the ledger and so on and so forth. So posting, so we have the posting clerk and so on and so forth. What are the functions of the finance department? The first one, the finance department keeps subsidiary books or ledger account. So as accounting students, you know what subsidiary books are books of original entry. You have learned all of them, so I'm not here to tell you what they are. And then you know what ledger is. So it is the uh, finance department that uh, keeps such books. Then the finance department also prepares annual financial account or annual financial statement. Remember, when you're talking about companies, we learned that the uh, shareholders meet during their AGM, that, that is the annual general meeting, and then their financial statements are prepared, and then uh, they are read to them so that they know the financial position of their business. Then you also know that public companies are required by law to prepare and publish in the newspapers. So, you know, uh, and it's the accounts department or the financial department that does that. The, we also have the third one that the financial department takes care of cash and bank accounts. So cash accounts, you, you know cash accounts, you know bank accounts. So it is the finance department that takes care of cash accounts and then bank accounts. Then the fourth one, uh, tax. Whatever that is related to tax. Calculating taxes that are supposed to be paid to the uh, Ghana Revenue Authority and so on and so forth. Tax returns, it is the financial department that does that. Then they also prepare invoice and debit note to their customers. So when you want to buy something, First, you may request for invoice, and the invoice may be given to you. It, that it will contain all the items you want to purchase, the quantity, the description, the quantity you want to uh, buy, how much is involved, the total, and then everything will be on the invoice. It is the finance department that does that. Then we also made mention of debit notes. Now, when invoice has been prepared to you, now once you have debit note, we also have credit note. So when invoice is prepared to you, at times there may be undercharge or overcharge. I said there may be undercharge or overcharge. Then, for example, the uh, invoice that was given to you stated that 
you were supposed to pay uh, 10,000 Ghana C. That is what I've been giving to you. Then later, for one reason or the other, it was found out that you were supposed to actually pay 11,000. So that means it has been undercharged by 1,000 Ghana cities. You were, you were given 10,000, but you were supposed to have paid 11,000. So it has been undercharged. So when it is undercharged, then certainly the, the, the seller will prepare debit notes and then send to you so that you know your bill that you are supposed to pay. The other side will be the credit note. If, you, if it were uh, 9,000 instead of uh, 11,000. Now, the first one, I said 10,000 was given to you, but it was supposed to be 11,000. Now, this time, they have rather made it uh, 12,000 instead of 11,000. So you have been overcharged. So credit notes will be prepared to you, and then you uh, now know the current amount that you are supposed to uh, pay. So the thousand cities will be deducted from the 12,000 and you know that you are actually supposed to pay 11,000. So that is done at the finance uh, department. Then, determination of prices. So the fixed prices of goods. You know, we have the cost accountant there. So we can have the cost accountant. We have the posting uh, clerk, cost accountant, financial accountant, they will all, they will all be here. So they will determine the prices of the goods. Then they will prepare vouchers for payment of salaries. As you are working, you are supposed to be paid. And they will prepare vouchers that will contain how much is supposed to be paid to you. They will deduct uh, whatever is supposed to be deducted, taxes and other things, and you know your net. And everything will be on the uh, voucher. So that is for that one. So that is for finance department. Now let's go to the human resource department. Human resource is a whole topic in your book three. So we shall talk about the functions of a human resource manager. But let's look at uh, that one in brief here. The first one is recruitment and selection of uh, staff. So is the human resource department that is uh, charged with the responsibility of getting people into the organization. So before you can you will be employed in the organization, is the human resource department that goes through the recruitment process. They, they have to uh, advertise, they have to call you for interview, they have to select their best, they have to do uh, so a whole lot of other things. So that is the first uh, one. That is recruitment and selection of staff. The second one is training. So they organize training programs for staff. Yeah, it's not the human resource department that will conduct the training, but they will organize the training program and decide whether the training should be done within, that is internal or without, that is external. So whether it is on the job or off the job training is the human resource department. Settlement of disputes. Settlement of this. I don't need to explain to you settlement of disputes. Disciplining staff. So if there is any discipline issue, whether you are supposed to be demoted, whatever discipline issue, uh, suspended, it is a uh, that department that does it. Keeping staff records. Now, human resource department, as if you look at it, I said it deals with staff matters. So anything that you are talking about there is connected with staff matters. And certainly it is headed by the human resource manager. And there are others who may also be working there, recruitment manager, and then training and development manager, which we have done when we were talking about organizational chart or organogram. So uh, keeping staff records and reports, so that is the part that keeps staff records and reports. Maintaining staff welfare or uh, better condition of service. So your welfare, as I indicated some time ago, they can, it is the, if there is the need for them to give you lunch, they'll be giving lunch, accommodation, they can do that. So anything that is related to your well-being, your comfort, it is the 
uh, human resource department that sees to that. Then promotion, so promoting, demoting, and transfer or transferring staff. So if you are supposed to be moved from a lower rank to a higher rank, which is called promotion, it is the department that sees to that. If you are supposed to be demoted for one reason or other, the department sees to that. If you are supposed to be, to be transferred, the department sees to that. So that is for the human resource department. Now let's go to production department. Now we know production department will certainly be exclusive or peculiar to uh, a manufacturing firm. So, and they will change the raw materials into finished goods. You have the production manager at the head, then others who will be working there. We have the plant manager, you have quality control officer, machine operator or engineer, you have designers and at and class in this particular department. There are functions. The first one, we have already done that one when we were talking about controlling. Tools, control tools. We talk about Production, planning, and control. So I will not go into that one again. Production, planning, and control. And it is the the uh, production department that uh, does production, planning, and control. You know, we talk about five stages, the routine stage, we talk about scheduling, dispatch, and so on and so forth. The second one is sending requisition for supply of materials or raw materials. Sending requisition. That is why I'm holding this one. Now get closer. Uh -huh. If you look at this one, this one is my own. You see, if you look at it critically, I was the uh, chairman for the schools, environment, and then sanitation committee. So I was given this requisition book so that anytime I needed something from the stores. I have to write it here. So if you look at this place, uh, if you look at this place, I requested for certain items. Uh, if you look at it, the first one was the book itself. I requested for the book itself. Then uh, 10 uh, ceiling brushes, five, uh, uh, five scrubbing brushes, six uh, long brooms, and so on and so forth. So, uh, as the name is requisition, so you request for, and then it is given to you. This is for the the, the school. But if you look at this one in the production department. They also have the requisition form. So if you understand this concept, then uh, the same thing uh, is what is happening. So when they want anything to be uh, released from stores, you have to prepare requisition uh, form, and then it will be released uh, raw materials or any other thing that is related to your department. So that is for that one. Then the next one, supplying right quantities of the goods produced. The next one, testing goods purchased. So when they buy, uh, no, uh, we are on the uh, production. I was talking about, what I was talking about there is the uh, purchasing department. So let's go back to the production. We talk about production planning and, and control. We talk about extending requisition for supply of raw materials. The third one, the third one is maintenance of plants and machines. Maintenance. That is why you have an engineer or plant manager here, so that the machines can be serviced. The machines can be replaced where uh, possible. They can be repaired. So that is for uh, that one. The next one is supplies the sales department with finished goods. So when they produce, they are into production. So when they produce, they will supply the sales department with their goods so that the sales department will sell the uh, goods. Then the last one here is that production of quality goods. That should have even been the first one because that is their main function, production of goods. And it should be of quality. That's why you have the quality control officer there. Now let's keep, come to the purchasing department, which is also called procurement. To procure means to buy, to purchase. Now the head there will be the purchasing uh, manager or other organization, they will say procurement officer. One day some of you may have that career. Now 
who are those who work with him there or her there? We have the storekeepers. You can have clerks there. They can, they can be a messenger there. So that's for that one. What are the functions? So now, what we are looking at the functions: purchasing raw materials, purchasing stationery. So anything that is purchased, delivery vans or whatever, what have you, is the department that does it. Supplying right quantities. So when they purchase raw materials and the production department needs the raw materials, they will supply the right quantity. If you uh, request for, then it will be given to you. Testing goods purchased. So when you buy the goods, you have to test to find out whether you have the right uh, quality. So it is their duty to do that. Then they confirm on the purchase invoice that the right quantity and quality have been received. So when they purchase, you may not necessarily have to go there to bring the goods. The supplier may have to bring the goods. Then you have to confirm that whatever you wanted to buy in terms of quality, in terms of quantity, had been supplied. So that is that one. The storage of goods, when the goods come. So that is why you can have, you have the storekeeper here, storekeeper here. Uh -huh. So storage of goods, storage of goods. Then you also keep goods uh, or records of goods issued. Production department requested for raw materials, records will be kept. Remember, you send requisition form, so it will be kept at the right place. So whatever goods that they supply, they will keep records to that effect. So that is for that one. Now let's go to the next department, sales department. The name tells you what they do. So I said they handle selling activities. And the sales manager will be there at the head. Then others that may be working there may be sales agents, sales representatives, clerks, and so on and so forth. Functions. Number one, the sales department takes care of goods produced and keeps warehouse. So you know they sell. So if they are selling, then they are also charged with the responsibility of keeping the goods. Because if you are selling, then you have to keep the goods to have them to sell. So they may also have a warehouse where the goods are kept and the goods will be sold as uh, this, this department, the production department supplies them. So that is for that one. The next function is, uh, is a promotion. Now this promotion is not like moving somebody like the one we did here. Uh, when we were talking about uh, the human resource department, we talk about promotion here. No, this promotion is moving the person from a lower rank to a higher rank. But this promotion means you are making your product known to people. You are making the product known to people through advertising, sales promotion, that is buy one, get one free, giving discounts, and uh, giving free samples, and uh, rebates, and so on. And so we learn all these things in marketing. Personal selling, you moving from one, uh, one person to another door to door selling. Promotion, they make the product known to people through the mass media. So that is for that one. Then the next one is sales of goods. In other words, they create demand. So that is for that. The next one, delivery of goods. So at that when people buy goods, they have a delivery van that will help to deliver the goods to your. Uh, location. Then the next one, the, the sales department keeps keeps records on credit sales. As accounting student, you know what is meant by credit sales. Credit sales. So the sales department will keep records of credit sales. Then they also conduct research for improvement. Research, market research or marketing research to find out what people say about their product so that if there is the need for any improvement, they can improve upon their product or to even come up with a new uh, product. So that is the, uh, the sales department. Then the last one here is that the sales department keeps 
records on sales revenue and sales expenses. So as an accounting student, you know what is sales revenue and you know what is meant by sales expenses. So here, the, they keep or the department keeps records. The next one is advertising department. The name tells you, remember here we talk about promotion and I made mention of advertising. And you know what is advertising, whether in the newspaper, radio, television, or whatever. You want to make your product known to people and you pay money to that effect. So uh, the, that's the advertising department. So as the head there will be the advertising manager. The, one of the functions is calling the attention of potential buyers and convincing them to buy the product. So this is a very simple, straightforward point. So all that they are doing is to call your attention that the product exists and they try to convince you to buy the product. Devising an attractive window display. So when you go to the store or an outlet, the way they have arranged the goods there beautifully, that is the work of the advertising department. Then organizing trade fairs. I hope everyone knows what is street fair and exhibitions. So that is the advertising department. The last one is devising attractive brand names. The uh, devising attractive brand names. Now, your product has competing products, and you have to give your product a name. That will distinguish it from other brands, and that is its branding. So, for example, when you have phones, there are a lot of brand names. So you can have Samsung, you can have a, a lot of them. You know them. You know them. So the one that we are using now is Samsung. There are other uh, uh, phones. You, you see? So that is the brand name. Now when it comes to soap, there are a lot of them. There are a lot. And you must have a name. So you can mention names, key soap, and so on and so forth. So you must have a name that will distinguish your product from other uh, product or other competing products. And I said, you have the device attractive brand name. You don't just give just any name. The name should be said that it, uh, people can easily get it. You can position it in the minds of people so, it, uh, so that it becomes a household name. And trademarks. You know, at times when you see a particular product, then you write the name of the product like this is Sprite. Then you write small, this R at the top here to show you that it has been registered and that nobody can use it. That's a trademark. That's a trademark. When you register a brand name or a brand mark, you learn that in marketing, it becomes a trademark. So that is for the advertising department. Now, if you look at this place, I said sales and then advertising, and I said that is marketing. So the two departments are together marketing department. So when you go to a particular organization, you may not have let's say sales department, advertising department, it may have marketing department. And certainly marketing department will be performing these uh, functions, sales functions and then advertising functions and then other uh, functions. So that is for that one. The next one is administration, which you are familiar with in your school. So the yeah, school's administration, or administration in any organization, or the general administration, will be involved with the day-to-day -day running of the organization. So I said, it generally co coordinates all the activities of the organization. It coordinates. So we have done what is meant by coordination. So it coordinates all the activities of the organization. Now remember, the organization is broken down into departments. So if you want to come to school, business department, science department, home economics department, 
visual arts department, and so on and so forth. Now, it is the administration that coordinates all the activities in the various uh, departments. So that is for uh, that one. Then, the head there is the administrative officer or the office manager, which we have already learned. When you go there, like the school's administration, you see typists there, then you see other clerks there, the male clerk, and so on and so forth. You see the secretary there, you see the messenger there, and so on and so forth. So that is for that one. Function. As I've already indicated, the first function is that the administration or general administration is in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the company. So in other words, it takes routine decisions, routine this not strategic decisions, routine decisions. And or you can say it performs clerical duties. Clerical duties. So when you say clerical duties, you know what goes into that. Two, administration controls the organization's resources. So that is uh, the second function. Then it handles human resource issues. That is why when you will be there, then you say, uh, you mention, even if you're a teacher, they will say, oh, uh, go to administration. They need this information from you. Go and update your records. Go say, bring this. So it is there that you go. That's where files are kept. And so that's why even your files are kept there. That's why at times they will come and call you. When they need your file, they will go there for your file. When you come to school for one student, for them, they will call the class captains to come and help them with the names of your class. And you have to arrange the files there. So it handles human resource issues. Then the last one here is that. Administration sees to the implementation of policies. We have done this. We said management formulates policies. Administration sees to the implementation of the policies. So that is that. The last one is maintenance. Maintenance. So maintenance, what did they do? Is it about repairs, replacement, and then servicing. So you repair machines, you repair equipment, you repair what have you, replacement where there is a need for you to rather change. For example, even in your school, some of your fans may be replaced if they cannot be repaired. At times they repair them, at times they replace them. When you break the rubber blades, they are replaced and so and so forth. So that is the maintenance. The name tells you what they do. And the head there is the maintenance officer. The maintenance officer will be working with other personnel. Number one, electrician. So when there is any problem that is related to electricity, lightning, bulbs. In your school, you know the electrician comes around to do that. Plumbers. So if there's anything, in your, even in school, your hostel, if you have problem with your pipes, the plumber will come there to repair. If there is a need for replacement, they will do the replacement. Then we have the carpenters there. And you know what they do. You have problem with your doors or anything that is related to carpentry. If your roofing sheets are removed, then uh, the carpenter will be there. Then all uh, the laborers, the laborers, they are all in that particular department. Functions number one: maintenance of assets. Maintenance of assets. Simple. Number two: safeguard company's assets. So you have to keep the company assets in safe condition. So there may be rules regarding how those assets uh, should be kept in a safe condition. The next one is 
Preparing maintenance schedule. Preparing maintenance schedules. Schedules. Now, what is it? The organization has assets that may include less cars. Now, you know, at a regular interval, you have to uh, service your uh, cars or machines. So you may have, you should have a plan for that. For example, for cars, you say, as for this car, every month we will send it to so -so 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 company for servicing. The oil, we will change the oil every two weeks. Or when the car travels every uh, 250 uh, kilometers, we will change the oil. So you have to prepare your maintenance schedule and fill that one so that you, your, your machines and other things will be operating efficiently. So pre uh, preparation of maintenance schedules. Then the last one here is that the maintenance department documents. Now this word is, we are using it as a verb. So that's why I didn't say document. I said document is that the word export. And export, export, export. One is a verb, one is a noun. So here I'm using this word, not in the noun form, but as a verb. So documents, that means they keep record. They keep record. Documents and maintains records of maintenance activities. So whatever maintenance activities that were carried out in the organization, records should be kept to that effect. So that you know that on this day, we replaced this. On this day, we repaired this. On this day, we did that and so on and so forth. So ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our topic on the various departments in an organization and their function. But remember, I said there are others that we are supposed to also do research and development, legal, transport, audit, audit, audit. One day some of you will become auditors. So what do you do? Internal auditor, external auditor, what do you do? So when you go to organization, they have the audit uh, section, or audit department, what do they do? That brings us to the end of our lessons on the various departments and their functions. So we meet again. So for now, I believe you can tell me the various departments and organizations and their functions. Till we meet again another time.